My name is uh, Engineer Sifila Mumenya from Kenya, based in Nairobi. I studied civil engineering from the University of Nairobi many years back. I did a master's in structural engineering from London and my doctorate again in engineering from the University of Cape Town. My name is Josephine Minzi, uh, architect. I have been in the industry since 2005. I have worked on projects of various categories and sizes. Once you have the plans drawn up, the next step is approval from your local county. From the client, what we usually require is three main documents. One is the copy of the title. Two is the copy of the paid up land rate receipt. And three is the survey plan. The survey plan, most of the times you find some clients don't have them. That is something that a lot of clients can, sorry, a lot of architects can assist with. It's something that's gotten from Survey of Kenya. In some instances, if you're not doing a residential development or you require the land use to be changed, there's something called a change of user. In this case, you'd have to get the services of a planner so that you can change it either from, say, residential to commercial, and that also has a time attached to it. The other one is you might need some special regulation. If you're building, say, next to the barracks or you're building in a, a low-lying zone, you would get some special permission from, from these bodies. That's as far as your local counties is, is concerned. When it comes to these counties, they also have a fee that they charge. The fees varies from county to county. Even the approval process varies from county to county. Some counties, like say Nairobi, you submit the architectural first. Once that is approved, then you submit the structural. There was a time when things were, were done manually. Nowadays, we've changed. Everything is done online. So your architect has an online portal where they upload the drawings and all these documents that we just highlighted, then the county will give you an invoice. That invoice is forwarded to you by the architect. So there's, there's usually a submission fee that they calculate based on square meter rates. From there, they have the site board fee, which is renewed annually. And you have the application fee for the site board and you have the application fee for the site board license itself. So every year you would have to, to renew that, that bit. There's also other bodies that uh, I think it's important to mention. We have NEMA, that's National Environmental Management Authority. You have NCA, National Construction Authority. Previously for residential projects, we, we used to get uh, an exemption letter for NEMA, but now we need a report done uh, from NEMA. They keep updating their requirements. For NCA, recently they've come up with a document that requires that we share our agreement with the client and it has to stipulate that the architect will supervise. Of course, now you have your, your local county. So for Nairobi, you have Nairobi County and NMS. They're working together. You will notice now on the portal, you get comments from, from both sides. What, this, what it has, it, it has various departments and your drawings go through these various departments. You have developmental control, you have planning, you have fire health and self and safety, you have water and sewerage, and you have roads and infrastructure. Now, all these drawings can take anywhere from four to eight weeks. It's usually not in our control, depending on when they sit. If you get comments back and you act on those comments, but generally within that time, you normally get your, your approval out. As those documents are being processed, it is usually um, common to have either the architect or the uh, client having contacted the structural engineer because the structural engineer will require to prepare the the structural plans and the structural plans are the generated from the approved architectural plans. The architect architectural plans, we can't do anything until they are approved, but you can be preparing yourself. One of the things that one needs to be preparing themselves with as they wait for all these approvals we have had, you need to visit the site itself to familiarize yourself with the site as, uh, as a structural engineer so that you have a feel of where that building will be placed. You need to check the neighborhood, what is happening, 
are there any features, special features that could interfere with your particular building? Because the building will not necessarily perform in isolation. In most of the plots we have, you may find that according maybe to the architectural drawing um, or plan, it's built beacon to beacon. That's a very important feature because then you need to ask yourself, maybe what will the neighbor do? And therefore, in the preparation of the structural drawings, you need to take into consideration that what your neighbor could be doing could uh, affect the, the structure. In the structural plans, we have uh, two parts. There is a substructure and the superstructure. Substructure is what you not see eventually, the foundations and whatever else will be buried. It is very, very important to appreciate that this is actually the most important part of the structure because the structure will sit on what will be buried. So as soon as then we have an approval of the architectural, then we embark on the uh, structural drawings. You can imagine or visualize the architectural as that what will be seen eventually. But imagine if you are like that with no skeleton, nothing to stand on, then it would be nothing. So the structural engineer comes in to put in the skeleton, whatever is inside, whatever will make a structure stand. So basically, that's why we are there to put in the, the skeleton onto the, the, the outer body of your uh, project. So the uh, structural drawings can only be uploaded once we attach the architectural approval reference number. It doesn't take as long as maybe the other approvals, but we still also need some time. Maybe I would give it a month, but you need to follow up. But as long as you've aligned yourself with, uh, strictly with what the architectural plans are, with no inconsistencies, there is usually not a big problem. And the documents that uh, we call the structural, we have to attach what we call the certificate of uh, structural design, where you summarize the codes you use, what are the parameters you used. Uh, you also have to attach on the submissions, a set of the calculations, because there's a lot of calculation before you produce the drawings themselves. If it's a reinforced concrete structure, you have to attach what you call the bar bending schedules. A very important document because that's the document that your fundi will use. What you may notice when you do the submissions is that you may have maybe four or five architectural drawings or approved plans where you have plans, elevation, sections, and so on. For example, if there are four or five, you may be surprised if a structural engineer gives you 20 out of that or even more because for each of those levels, there is the layout, then there is the, you know, the, the, the plan, the section, the reinforcement. So we generate a lot more information on the structural drawing. So you end up again with a whole dossier of, uh, of plans. Um, these days, everything is tied to um, the online. There is uh, an invoice that is given to the client uh, by the architect. These days, it covers even the structure. So there is no submission uh, fee for the structure because everything these days is lumped together. Mm -hmm.